So I'm going to get started here. And again, thank you very much for joining me today for our presentation on ID8 apps. Learn the simple ABCs of ID8 spell check within ID8 apps. Again, my name is Richard Taylor with ID8 software. Um, again, I'm going to go through these housekeeping items real quickly. Uh, you can always find the question panel, type into the question panel, and my colleague Sash will be able to help with questions as we go through the webinar. Also, after the webinar, there's going to be a very short survey. There's only five questions. It's really simple. It'll take you know just a couple minutes. We'd really appreciate it if you fill out that. It helps us uh, better focus these webinars and these presentations to what you need uh, and what is of interest to you. And as I said, the webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website soon. Okay, real quickly, just a little bit about myself. My background is in architecture. I have over 20 years of Revit experience. Um, I was working for Autodesk for about, or a little over 12 years as one of the product managers, um, and then worked in various uh, AEC software development companies, as well as large and small architecture firms. I put all of my contact information there uh, on email, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and I'd be happy to connect with you um, if you know you have any particular questions, or I'm usually posting like blog articles and so forth uh, concerning LinkedIn and, and uh, Twitter. So that's always nice to, to be able to follow me and you can get lots of good stuff on ID8 software. All right, ID8 software is all about simplifying your Revit data challenges. ID8 software creates five add-on solutions to Revit. And you see there on the screen, ID8 BIMLink, ID8 Explorer, ID8 Sticky, ID8 Apps, and ID8 Style Manager. And today, we are going to focus on ID8 Apps. ID8 Apps is a collection of nine productivity and efficiency tools for all Revit users. So within our nine tools of ID8 Apps, there is a tool called ID8 Spell Check, and that's really what we're here to learn today and talk about is why should we use ID8 spell check, right? What's what makes it so great? And so I'm going to talk about setting up the different dictionaries, so language support um, that goes above and beyond what's available in Revit. I'm going to talk about the different selection methods for checking the text um, because there are three different methods where you can review how you're actually going to check the um, the spelling in your project. And then I'm going to go through several uh, presentations, so I'll run a little demo of the three different ways. And then I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way, hopefully, or at the, the very end, actually. So first off, why should I use ID8 spell check? Um, well, <clears throat> the, as I said, it goes above and beyond the spell check engine that is within Revit. So within Revit, you're basically only doing one view or sheet at a time, and it's very limited in the amount of text that it's checking. So we can actually check all of the sheets in the project at once. Um, you can check schedule and keynote legends or legend data. Um, so I'm going to show you some examples of that. I think just the idea that you can check schedules is a huge um, time saver and uh, adds to the sort of efficiency and productivity. You can uh, zoom to review any sheet-based errors, and we go above and beyond the language support. Um, so I'm going to talk about that, how we have additional languages. I joked at the beginning that you know we have Hungarian, um, in addition to those that are available for Revit. And then we're also going to be able to report on errors, and I've got some examples of this, um, where the information cannot be changed, like uh, it, the text is in a keynote file or the, the text is in a group. And you probably all know the laws of Revit. You know, when something's in a group, you have to go into the group edit mode to be able to edit or review or change that data. So we're going to be able to flag it, tell you it's, it's uh, incorrect spelling, but then you have to go and uh, sort of, um, you know, do the group edit in that particular case, or you might have to go to the keynote file to make the change. Um, but it's really nice that we're flagging exactly where those errors occur and how you would go um, fix those. Okay, the first step is setting up the custom dictionary. So you may know within Revit, you can go to the file option 
and you can select file um, uh, options and then there is this uh, dialog that you see on the screen here and we're going to go down to the check spelling options. So the default um, for that check spelling, right, that's what ID8 spell check is going to use when you first start. Now you're going to be able to change it, but like if I've got in my um, Revit options under check spelling, in this case you see on the screen I have English, you know, American English set. That is going to be my default language for ID8 spell check. And then anytime that I uh, review and add information to the uh, dictionary, when it says like, hey, this particular word, it might be, um, let's say, an architectural type of word um, that uh, I'm, let's say, a topo service is one that's going to come up. So topo service, surface is something that's it's correct, you know? So I wanna add that to my dictionary, and this is where it's gonna get added. And then we're also using the building industry dictionary as well, um, which has a lot of um, abbreviations, and I'll show you some examples of that. So, <clears throat> as I said, we have multi-language support. What's interesting, though, is that if you have the default in Revit set to American English, as an example, and then you go to ID8 spell check and you change it to German, it's going to tell you that. You know, it will still do that, but it just says, hey, Revit is running in English, but it's using German, okay? So it gives you that nice warning. And again, with the languages, uh, you'll see there kind of a quick synopsis in that Revit supports uh, the, you know, in the spell check engine, if you go to just the, the, the spell check and the default settings, you know, uh, American English, British English, you see the ones that are listed here. But we're also adding Japanese, Korean, Polish, Chinese, uh, simplified and traditional, Portuguese, uh, Russian, Czech, Dutch, and Hungarian um, for all of those projects that you may have around the world. Um, and What's really important about that, this next slide, I apologize, it's very wordy, but I'm going to be giving you um, this information at the end, and when we uh, post the information uh, for the recording, I'll have a link to this as well. Um, so even though that we support these languages, right, these, uh, let's say Hungarian, uh, as an example, I need to install the Hungarian dictionary within Windows on Windows 10. Um, so even though I can select it within spell check, I might not have it available because we're using the Windows dictionaries uh, that are part of the operating system. So we wrote a great blog about how you can set up the custom or the, the additional dictionaries, I should say not custom per se, but um, additional language dictionaries within your Windows operating system um, and install those. Once you install them, then they're available within the ID8 spell check engine. So again, apologize for the lots of words, but that blog article is really helpful and it could it gives so much more information and it's much more detailed than I could tell you in you know, just a few minutes. So that's why I wanted to post it. Okay, so now the next, uh, I said we talked about the dictionaries and how you set it up. The next step is that ID8 spell check has three main methods to check the spelling, right? So the first one is we can check all open sheets and views. Pretty self-explanatory. Basically, whatever is open within your Revit um, project, well, it will check. And if it's a sheet and you have five views assigned to that sheet, there may be schedules or detail views or plan views, it's going to check those as well. Then we're going to see an example of how we can check the sheets in a sheet list. So in Revit, you can create a schedule that is your sheet list schedule. And so you can choose like all 500 sheets, and then you can go and check. It's going to check all the text on those sheets, as well as all of the views that are assigned, or um, um, I guess yeah, that's the best word, assigned to those sheets, um, are part of those sheets, right? And then the third way is just to be able to check schedules. So you may want to just review specific schedule information. Um, and so there's the option to do that as well. And then you see, of course, the, the language drop down where you can choose the language um, that may be different than what your default language is going to be for Revit. So a couple things about schedules um, is that only text-based fields are checked. 
Um, and really for the sanity, you think about like if we were checking like family and type and then we were changing it, well, that's a parameter that could end up being, you know, kind of dangerous. So we did, we're not um, checking the following parameters, any number field, any, you know, family and type, family name or type name, level name, fire rating, or the key style value. So like, you know, if you have different uh, rooms like gold, um, silver, platinum, and then they assign finishes, if you misspell gold, well, that's a key value that's uh, driving other parameters. So again, we, we decided not to review that. So again, just so you know that there are certain fields within schedules that are not checked. Uh, so it really comes down to only the text-based fields. Okay, now it's time for the fun part, right? The demo. Uh, so let's switch over here to Revit. And today I'm using Revit 2020, but all of our solutions are available on Revit 2017, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, so we go to the ID8 software tab, ribbon panel, and you have our all of my ID8 software um, solutions, and you see our ID8 apps, and I've got spell check. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, the only thing I have open is this title sheet. And this is just the sample, as you see, the sample Revit project. I thought it would be good to use that, um, since we're all familiar with it, and we can test on this if we want. So I'm just going to go to ID8 spell check. Well, when you first uh, invoke the command, um, it comes up with this dialog. And like I said, there are three main methods. Well, do you want to check all open sheets and views? Do you want to check um, sheets in the sheet list or check schedules? So I'm going to do all open sheets and views. In this case, it's just A001, the title sheet. So I'm going to do spell check the selection. Okay, so it says, oh, open concept, you know, or that's, uh, looks like that is misspelled. So you have the option here to say, well, do you want to ignore or add to the dictionary or ignore all, meaning it, Ignore will only ignore it once. If it finds it again, the misspelling within this search, um, it will ask me again if, it wants, if I want to change it. So I say, you know what, it should be changed to concept, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say change all, right? Same way with, ooh, living room is misspelled. I'm going to change all, okay? And now it goes through and a door, you know, okay, that looks good. I'll change all again. Oh, here's a good example, what I talked about, topo surface. Well, you know what? Topo surface is actually correct, right? Obviously, the American dictionary or the American English doesn't understand what that is. What I'm going to do is add this to the dictionary. So go ahead and by clicking there, it adds it. And it comes up with free strand, standing railing. I'm going to say, you know what? Let's do freestanding. Let's change all. Uh, line weights is another good one. Um, so in that case, um, is that actually misspelled? Uh, actually, you know what, let's add that to the dictionary. And then this one with lines, what's nice is it gives you several selections here. So in this case, it's I-N-E-S, but you see here it's like, oh, it's I-N-S, or, you know, because I scrolled around, oh, I really want that to be lines, and I want to change that. So when it's done, it says, oh, it checked one sheet, which is all I have open. It had five views that were associated with that, that sheet. And, you know, it's going to check the... The, in this case, these two, like this open concept living room and this comfort view, I put those on there as just annotation text, so they're assigned to the sheet. So the fact is that you're checking text that's assigned to the sheet uh, or drawn as annotation on the sheet level, but it's also doing the views too, which is really nice. And, you know, just for fun, I thought this was, was good as I close this. I actually did this, um, uh, this Huga. Because uh, I thought, oh, that's going to be a misspelling, and I'm going to add that to the dictionary. Well, believe it or not, that was actually in the dictionary. It's the Danish word for comfort view or comforting. Um, so I was kind of surprised that I was trying to pick something that I figured wouldn't be in the dictionary, but it actually was. All right, I'm going to come over here now to File. I'm going to go down to my options that you saw, and I'm going to go to Check Spelling. Under the Check Spelling, um, you know, I've, I just, uh, I've got my American English, and then here is my custom dictionary. When I go and edit that, it just brings up a text editor, and you can see that previously I added light allure, calcellite, light profile, which is some information that's going to be coming in from a schedule, but you'll notice it also has topo surface and line weights. Um, those are the two words that I added um, um, in our little spell check. 
So as I continue to add things, this custom dictionary is going to be um, modified, right? And of course I can go in with a word or a text editor and modify that if I so desire. Okay, let's go ahead and fit this. So that was step number one, right? Step number two, or method number one, I should say. Method number two is a sheet list. So if I come over here, I've actually created, I said a sheet list to review spelling. If I double click on that, right? It just has A102 all the way, you know, it's got plans, elevation, site plan. I added one for lighting. Um, so it's going to then check all of the sheets in this sheet list. So if I come over back to ID8 software, we're going to go to ID8 spell check. And we're going to say check sheets in the sheet list. Well, I only have that one, which is sheet list to review spelling. So I'm going to click on that and say check. So it's going to go through and it says, hey, warning. Hmm. There is a word called downlighting that's spelled wrong. But it says this schedule is managed by ID8 Sticky. Now, for those of you that may know, ID8 Sticky is our solution that links in Excel data and creates a schedule in Revit. But if the information changes in Excel, it's going to update um, on the, the Revit side. So basically what this is telling me is that, okay, you can change it here, right? Just as we can modify a schedule you know, outside of Excel with Sticky, I'm gonna go ahead and change it, but if I go to the sticky schedule and update, or maybe if I have auto update on where the next time I open up the project, it's going to look at the information in Excel and then override it. So if it was misspelled in Excel, it's going to then be misspelled again. So the real thing that you should do is say, review the schedule and actually go out to Excel and make the change there. But I'm going to make the change here. And um, now this one is a uh, dining. I also wanted to show you an example of let's zoom to the element. So if I click on zoom to element, it's going to open up that view, right, which was the level one view, which has outdoor dining. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I want to change that. That makes sense. Um, now this one I set up and I put in a group. So this was the observation deck. Again, if I can zoom to the element here, it says now level two. And you see, I put the observation deck and the chimney. I, I made a group out of it just so that I would get this warning. So what this tells me is that outside of the group edit mode, I can't make the modification. I actually do have to then review that, that, that piece of data and go into group edit to make the change. So in fact, notice the, the, um, the change and the change all is not available. I can't make any modifications to it. So I'm going to ignore that. Now this one, I, again, I purposely built some of these. This one's is trim is misspelled incorrectly, but it says, hey, the keynote um, text parameter is read only. So again, I'm gonna zoom to the field. It's gonna open up the little keynote legend. I only put one there, but I misspelled it in the text file. So in the keynote text file, there is a, uh, an error. So you need to go out to the keynote text file to make the change. But what's great is ID8 spell check is flagging me and saying that, okay, that, that's wrong. I can't make, you know, I, I can't modify it, but this is what's being driven by the keynote file. So I'm going to ignore that. And then it comes up and it says, okay, I checked seven sheets, 20 views, and four schedules. And I made two mo uh, modifications. I love this report because when you click on report and then you hit save, it's going to basically tell you when it was generated, you know, what time. Uh, so you can see here I'm on Eastern time. Um, and um, with the file that was checked, the number of sheets. So it's just a really nice summary. Um, and it actually has the values. It will tell me which keywords, like in this case, um, I didn't add with this particular spell check. I didn't add any words to the custom dictionary, but it'll tell me what words and it'll tell me what elements were modified. And what's great, again, is the fact that it gives me the element ID. So I could, again, that keynote legend, I could just you know, highlight, copy and paste the uh, element ID and search for that and then make say, oh, that's being driven by this particular keynote file. I need to change that. So ni nice. And again, this is just a text file. OK, so let's come back over here. Let's come up to go back to our title sheet. All right, so the, the third method is just to check schedules. So if I come over here to ID8 spell check, 
and I'm going to review the check all schedules. And, you know, pretty self-explanatory. This one, remember, we had the keynote parameter. It was a legend, basically, which is, uh, you know, legends and schedules. Um, so I'm going to, again, ignore that. Um, this one, though, it says DET detail with period. I actually might want to add that to the dictionary because that seems pretty reasonable. Uh, and I'm going to close. So, again, it only made the one uh, warning and one addition. Also, I mentioned that this one specifically, this open concept living room view, and I A slash V, I did that because when coming over here to the options and under our check spelling, I wanted to show you that, you know, we are reviewing the uh, the dictionary that is the building um, specific dictionary. So there's this A slash V. These are all primarily a, a lot of abbreviations um, that are specific, obviously, to, you know, AEC, um, you know, uh, what what are they? Yeah, building industry. And then if we go over here to the custom dictionary, you can see that DET was added there um, for the custom dictionary. So I said that it's okay. All right. So let's go ahead and fit this and switch back to the presentation here. All right. So a couple different, uh, I'll call it tips, is that ID8 spell check. If you just uh, went and did a, a, let's say, a standard sheet view, and you had a number of different uh, titles. Here, I'll give you an example. I'll switch back. And if I go to the elevations and sections, right, I'm going to double click on the sheet. And as an example, this um, title, which is a viewport title, South, and this other one that says no, or Longitudinal Section, um, it's not by default going to uh, check that because it's in a tag um, or it's a title. So what we do here is, you know, it says here, um, if it's a block, um, a title block, a tag, then you can place it in a schedule. So I created a sheet list here that has the sheet name, the view name, and the title on sheet. And all of those then can be reviewed uh, and checked for their, their spelling. Okay, so that's kind of a little tip, is if, if you want to look at all of the, the title on sheet, make sure that you create that as a schedule, and then it's going to check that particular field. Um, and then also, I, I didn't mention it, but when you do a schedule field, um, let's come back over here to spell check. I'll just do a, um, the, again, the, the check all schedules again. Um, when I do... I can say, well, it's looking at this keynote tag. It's looking at this field keynote tag text. I can say ignore that, by the way, and then it'll just skip over it. Um, so I can always ignore a particular column header or field within the schedule itself. So just a couple tips there. All right, we have a number of warning messages. And these are not necessarily errors. Again, they're warnings, right? Meaning that most of them is because it can't make a change meaning that the, the, the value that you're trying to spell check is read-only, which I've already shown you. It could be a keynote. Uh, it could be, um, you know, uh, for instance, uh, something that's in a group. But uh, also it could be driven by a global parameter. It could be within a nested family. It could be a parameter that is managed by a key parameter. It could be locked by work sharing. Or, you know, I showed the example, it could be coming from Sticky. So a good way to review all these warning messages, or if you get something like that, is let's go back to the, the uh, uh, ID8 spell check, right? Come over here to the little uh, arrow, right, which is the pull down, or you could go to this question mark. Either one works fine. Um, but it, I like to do this. I'm just, I guess, old school. Um, and so here is the in product help right, for ID8 spell check. And just click on understanding warning messages. And there's a great little summary about each one of these. So the value is read only. You'll see there's keynotes, there's global parameters, there's nested families, there's parameters managed by the key parameter, there's groups, um, you know, work sharing, and then sticky. So, um, you know, it's great information right in the product. However, you know, if you click on one, let's say one of these other, or let's say learn more, click here, you can click on our online help, which is going to then link out to our online support. 
And you can see that there's, you know, frequently asked questions as an example. That's always kind of a nice one to review, you know. Uh, so can I check one more than she? What language is supported? You know, are all schedule fields checked? A lot of the information that I showed you earlier, right? Um, so the frequently asked questions and the known issues is always nice to review, as well as, you know, how would you, um, how would you use it or, or how to start using ID8 spell check? All right, so let's go, I'll close down the help here. So that's always a good tip with these warning messages. And then another tip, just to let you know that um, this is actually in our known issues. Under the Revit options, the check spelling, everything below the sort of halfway dot, uh, mark of the dialogue, which I talked about, you've already saw me, we were able to set the, the default dictionary, we were able to set the, the, the custom dictionary, that we've got the building industry dictionary, but these settings up above, um, basically ID8 spell check ignores. So what we're gonna do is this, is we're gonna find misspellings, even if the words are in caps. So like the, with the Revit, you can say, well, no, I don't want to, to check, you know, capital letter or uh, words in caps. Um, it's gonna find misspellings, even if the first letter's capitalized, it's gonna ignore the words with numbers and it doesn't check for duplicate words. So if you typed in really, really, really um, fantastic wood beam, um, it's gonna say that's fine because it's spelled correctly. So just to let you know that it's not uh, reviewing these particular settings. So if you had some particular need, um, then, then going back to the Revit uh, default spell check would be where you would need to review that. Okay, so hopefully during this presentation we talked about and you learned why should you use ID8 spell check. Hopefully I gave you enough value that you understand that it's much more robust than the default Revit spell check engine. I talked about setting up the dictionaries and again I gave you lots of information. We have a great blog post. In fact, in the meantime, if you want to Google it, you can just say um, uh, like ID8 spell check dictionary setup and the blog I'm sure will pop up. Um, then there, I showed you the three main methods for selecting and checking the text, and then we did a demo of running through the spell check engine, and then I gave you some tips and tick tricks um, for specific maybe known issues or tips about like how would you uh, check certain items of text. Um, it's best to put those into a schedule. And lastly, don't forget the survey at the end, um, because uh, as I said, there's a very quick survey at the end of this presentation. Uh, uh, also, our latest release of ID8 apps um, is from November of 2019, so Q4, that was our last update. As you can imagine, we're planning to update it with the new release of Revit that we're anticipating probably around mid-April. Um, so we will then be supporting 2018, 19, 20, and 21. Um, but right now, the latest and greatest available on our website is the Q4 from November. Um, or actually I think it's October 30th, um, is the date of the software. Um, so you can download that for a no cost, 14 day full function trial for not only ID8 spell check, but all of the other eight productivity and efficiency tools. I wanna to thank everyone for their time and attention. I wanna make sure that from ID8 software, we, we tell everyone to please be safe, um, and be healthy, you know, I, it's all very stressful and difficult times, and we certainly uh, realize that, and we're all working remotely and working from our homes as well. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, go, we'll get through this all together. So with that, I wanna thank everyone um, and um, appreciate it.